Hey everybody, Justin with VMP Performance here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm at the airport right now. I know everybody can already see from the thumbnail that we're doing something really big. Come along with us on the journey. Here we are. There's the man himself. I think we're lost. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you gotta go down on 99, you gotta go uh, south. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? Hey, good yourself. Good. Good. What's up? <laughs> Come on, good to see you. How you doing? Good, good, good to see you. you too. Welcome, welcome. And when did you start doing superchargers? In 88. Hey, wow. Yeah. So like I was five years old. Yeah. Well, I was still a little bit. So I was uh, I'm 47 now. So this is where the magic happens. This is it. Yep. So this is the blanks. So uh, we press the shaft in, right? So the shaft is basically is already ground and done. Okay. And then the material is raw, so other than that we just touch off the diameters of the surface, it's just to keep you know, it a little bit, but we cut it, and that's when we true it. And then it goes to coating after that. Can I borrow a couple of these? And yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah. You know, I can't do CrossFit on the road, so. That's right. We go through uh, two of these a day. Wow. So we have two shifts running this department and nowhere else. So this runs, you know, two shifts every day. And Damn. plus Saturday. We do Saturdays as well. Is that in eight, 16 hours a day? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, so we're, we, we're, we push hard. That's a lot of rotors. Yeah. And then this is our newer machine. Looks like you could uh, live in here. Yeah, yeah seriously. It's a 40,000 pound machine. But if you want to get close, you can see it looks like about 11 minutes of rotor on average, depending on the size. So 11 minutes to make a rotor. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. The rotors are so dialed in that we were doing every one when we started. All right, then we went to every five, then we went to every 10. Now we're closer to one of every 20. And that's, and that's very common in manufacturing to use like this really specialized equipment to check like yes. every so many. Exactly, you know. yeah. Yeah, because we're basically all we're doing is checking for the, you know, cutter wear, so to speak. I know, mean, so. that's incredibly accurate over there. Yeah. This is just like the triple check. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly, exactly. And then we have it's our Vici Vision. So that's a laser comparator. So that's how we check all our shafts to check for run out. Okay. So it just specs it about 30 seconds. How accurate is that? That is plus or minus about five microns. Oh, oh. Yeah. You're talking microns, you're talking like hair, like less thinner than a hair, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Quality is really, really important to us at VMP, so I'm glad to see that like you guys are doing all of this. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a lot of work, but it's needed nowadays, right? Yeah, this is just mock-up motors, but otherwise it turned into a mushroom. We usually have every one of the V8s, just to check something because in manufacturing or instructions or whatever, you just need something to just physically see it every once in a while, right? So, okay, my wife and I, my business partner, we work together and Chuck used to work at VMP. I, I can relate. I love to change things, but yeah. when you go and do that, you have to go back and check it again. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There's always something you miss, right? Because you're focused on something else, right? So there's something you're like, oh yeah, I forgot we did that for a reason, right? And it's, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's, it's all tough. in the name of like improving and it's making all about improving. better. Yeah, exactly. So like, and I'm kind of reading between the lines here. Is so the three liters like the highest volume? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so yeah. you know what? we've kind of known is that everybody wants like a, a you know, a four or five liter, but yeah, yeah. they really need a three liter, yeah. something in that range. Yeah, three liter is definitely the best for today's V8. Yeah, that's definitely. There's, you go too big, then you're just wasting energy. The laws yeah. of physics apply, you know, yeah. to where, wherever, you, whatever rotors you're using. Exactly, exactly, yeah. So, and of course, the smaller blowers are so good now compared to the old days that, you know, the power that you couldn't achieve before, now you can, right? So. Yeah. It's 
not like the old days. The old days you just ran off a curve, right? But nowadays they just keep going. Keep so, going, yeah. yeah so. I think we can all agree that if you're running more than 30, 32 PSI, you need a freaking turbo. You need a turbo. That's right. Yeah. We try to just try to people. We try to use around 30 as a number. So around 30 is where that there's a true crossover point to where, you know, now we need to open the clearances up or need some liquid in there or something. And you're just better off going to a turbo unless the rules, you know, state otherwise, right? And, and I, I will also tell you that for those of you out there, don't just because we talked about 30, don't go straight to 30 because yeah. the pressure before the intercooler is way freaking higher. Yes. So like we actually, with the product we have out there now, we tell a lot of people 27 is a good, safe, comfortable number. I think that's about what your race car runs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Depends yeah. on how, how fast you want to go. That's what I love to hear, that control of the whole process and that foresight and, and everything that basically keeps the technology cost-effective and reliable for the consumer. Yep, yep, exactly. Do all of the asymmetrical rotors make you feel weird, Dustin? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you know, <laughs> I'm way past that. So, yeah, have to... so that's the RAM kit right there. Oh, heck yeah. You got that Hell Kitty throttle body right there. That's like super clean. I mean, simple, effective, big throttle body. Yep. And then if it's the 11 to 14, or sorry, 11 to 17 version, we remove this because the airbox is in a different place. Okay. So then it actually, you know, lines okay. up perfectly. So it's the same same inlet, but different airbox, a different filter adapter for, oh. the, for the other version. So, you know, it's two SKUs, but still it's, you know, basically the same kit. I'm looking forward to uh, selling some of these and installing yeah. some of them in our shop. The brands are great. They're a great business. Yeah, because they're pretty inexpensive and they make great power. So This is a Gen 6 T-Rex kit that we're using for testing as well. So it's the new one-piece housing. Uh, we got a new air box that goes right up to here that we worked with SMB on. And uh, the rest of it's just basically the, the regular Hellcat kit. So you said something like, uh, something like hot one piece housing. Yeah. That's really important, right? Really, really important. Yep. Yep. Everything, we went back, got rid of the modular and everything's going back to the one piece. Yep. Those were like the good days for us, like in the, you know, the mid teens, I call them where like Roush was like, you know, oh, the tooling's worn out and it's like, uh, Okay, well let's uh, let's redesign it before we like retool it. Yeah, right, right. And like right. everybody was on board with that. Yeah, I'm right. like, hey, we learned this, this, and this. We're gonna change this. Oh yeah. And we just kept popping out revision. How do you make the product better? You got to keep developing <laughs> nonstop, right? And just yeah. I mean, there's uh, just <clears throat> we've learned so much on our kits over the years, and like, and we're you know we we're small, flexible company, so we've been able to do a lot of that similar stuff on a way smaller scale than you guys. But right, right. you know, better intercoolers, better whatever's available. Yeah get that stuff in the kit. You yeah, know? exactly. Right. This is ours and that's a, a customer's there, but this is the more most production version where it's all production hoses, production, you know, everything, parts. Uh, we have cold air kits too, but uh, we, haven't we haven't tried the new production ones, we just got them. But as of now, that would be an optional component, you know, independent of the, the kit, <clears throat> pending emission testing, you know. Of course. Yeah, so. Gotta make sure it's, uh passes the uh, standard the vehicle was originally certified for. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy, all the stuff you learn, you just want to play with cars and make <laughs> horsepower, yes. and then all the crap you have to learn to be able to do that That's legally. Right. There was a lot of little things that required changing. The heat, you know. Right, for the radar, is that why you had to do yeah. the heat exchanger? Yeah, yeah, we were looking at that too. And the, and the shutters, are, they're not as easy to take out now. You could cut them, but. Uh, we, yeah. we looked at that. Yeah as well and yeah you right you'd cut them and you'd keep part of them yeah. to hold the radar bracket yeah. and it's just so we made it to where they just fit it fits now with them in there okay yeah. that's beautiful yeah nice because so. you've been working on this for like a, quite a while I've, I've... sad to say probably two years two years yeah damn yeah so like in two years you can get a kit like perfect you, you can really get it dialed in yet the first few samples we still had extra bolts so i'm working on that <laughs> And, I mean, and, and I'll be honest, like we've engineered our own kits from the ground up in conjunction with our other partner and everything. Yeah. And like, but like, you know, having your relationship with Ford and just the head start you guys get on things is like, it's hard to beat that. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely, it's a unique experience to be able to, to have some of the, you know, inside of, you know, the hood lines and where things are going um, in the future. So that was, that, that was a significant deal. The main thing was just really the why too. We really struggled trying to make it look right. 
you know, and uh, some people it, obviously still don't like it, but you know. You, you know, there's some <laughs> arguments on the internet and yeah. like, you know, you've got your supporters and we've got our supporters and I just want to talk about the Y tube a yeah. little bit and the dual throttle body stuff. Definitely. Like, I think your kit, you know, the, and what's going to become our kit, right. I think the way that everything works together I think it really lends itself to the Y tube. Yes. Yeah. You know, exactly. If we ever did a kit, you know, I think the twin throttle body thing, our simulations and our studies showed that it had some positives too. Yep. But you know, now working with you guys on the 24, it seems like uh, you know this is what it's going to be, and it's going to be really good. Yep. Yeah. The we we looked at it. We we spent a good four months doing a bunch of different versions, 3D printing or whatever. Our biggest concern with the dual throttle body was we really had to choke the air to get it up over the pulley and in between the hood, right? We really we had to right. choke it. I couldn't get the airflow that we get and, out of that right now. And like looking right? at your kit right here, I can totally see that. Yeah. Whereas like the kit we were working with before had a little more volume yeah. over the top of the pulley. Yeah, and then uh, you know the issue was at that point was servicing the, the pulley, right? You, yeah. you, can't, you really can't get it without. So then we had to make the inlet to where you had like to have six easy bolt, easy access bolts, which didn't look good. And I've already found from the yeah. conversations we've had like like we both like to do really unique, really like high performing, nice stuff, but yep. like the manufacturability and the cost still has to be reasonable. Yeah, exactly, and the tech calls too, right? <laughs> I mean, the fact they're gonna take that inlet off and that is direct inlet into the supercharger, you know, in, and it's oh gonna go God. down, right? And like, then even for it's like ease of, scary. like not that it would be difficult, but okay, if you're changing pulleys between rounds right. and a rate, like yep. that puts you back a lot more time. A lot more time, a lot more time. If I thought that in no way you were ever gonna be able to modify anything, ever do anything else, I would have maybe looked at that because it would have been, you know, you're not gonna change the belt, you know, once every 25,000 miles, whatever, but knowing the Mustang nature of the business, <laughs> right? I know what most likely is going to happen. So therefore I wanted to make it as, you know, upgradable as possible. So yeah. are, are you confirming what I have long suspected that the Ford customers with shit the most. Oh, absolutely. No question. There's, I don't think there's anything even close to it, honestly. So yeah. like, like having our own kits and, and doing everything, it's like we have been totally thrown to the fire and, and really met the demand and the need there yeah. to produce a really nice kit. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's so, that's, that's cool to know that we've got over the hump and yep. now we've got you guys as a partner and we've got access to all your kits for all makes and models. Absolutely, yeah. And there was, there, there was a big benefit of the product body is once we said, okay, we're just, we're just going single, right? We were able to get the round one and tilt it at a little better angle to actually outflow our 132 and 150 throttle bodies, right? And so that was, it was a, you know, a double-edged sword, so to speak. Not only did we get, you know, the dual filters, we actually improved the efficiency to the supercharger by, you know, directing it basically more direct at the rotors. That's that's awesome. Right. So and <clears throat> and I love that round throttle body too. Yeah. So that's yeah. A good Definitely thing. easier to control, much easier to tune around. Um, yeah. Much better. There's some rotor packs, uh, so process is we put the rotor packs together. So we you know press the rotors together and we make a rotor pack and then it goes to these timing benches here where we time them then to go you know into the housings. And then if we can't keep up, we time in the housings, but all that's gonna change when we get over to the newer, the newer building. Yeah, so you can see that we have countersunk bolts in there, so we have a timing procedure using those timing sunk bolts, which uh, can never come out of time unless we leave the bolts loose. <laughs> which is fantastic. But it also created a massive headache of trying to get them because what happens is with the countersunks, you know, countersunks always want to move just a right. little bit, right? If you're not dead center. So then we have to, we fight it. So we have a new version coming with new, uh, bolt, new open bolts. And it'll be a new process to really speed it up. Then we do the inlets here, right? So they get all the, the well, some get in bypasses, some don't. But it's a pretty simple press. So we press here, then press there. Basically what's supposed to do is inlets and rotor packs and the lids in the next room are all done. And then they're supposed to grab them off the shelf and finish the kits. So lid, obviously we do a ton of lids now, right? So this is where we uh, pressure test them here. So they usually load the cores in the morning and then they put together the lids and we try to have lids um, pre-assembled. Nice, you got a little pressure tester and leak master. Yeah, because the, the cores float a millimeter. So we need to put a little bit of pressure on it uh, to validate that the, the we, we don't bust one of the seals on the inside. A lot of okay, volume. so that guy goes in here and yep. double checks that you got a good seal on there. Yeah, and because there's two separate cores, we're chest, we're testing, you know. Different oh, things. that's so cool. So they're yeah. independent of each other. So on the F-150, 
this is all precast in where it's one fitting goes into two. Me, hook clearance. Yeah, so we just changed this fitting yeah. out, you know, so. I saw this on the pictures you sent me where you've got. Yeah, and those are all structure <clears throat> after doing a bunch of fee analysis. So, you know, it wants to bend the most in the middle. So we, you know, we tried to angle it toward the, the flow <clears throat> we're going as much as possible, but we had done a bunch of fee analysis to make sure it holds up at 30 PSI. So, um, like uh, I looked at that and I thought about our Apex Predator lid. Yeah. And uh, like uh, the customers were happy they could hear their supercharger more because it, it doesn't have the sound dampening of the factory lid. Yeah, right. And the porting guys were mad because they were getting phone calls after they ported the blowers. The customers thought there was something wrong with them because they were making more noise. Yeah, right, right, so, yeah, yeah. Can't, can't make everybody happy. You can't make everybody happy, yeah. Everybody, I, I've noticed that the Mustangs want the noise. So this new assembly area is just going to increase your throughput like crazy. Oh yeah, absolutely. We, we, we can double our capacity if we can fulfill all the spots, right? That's so, what I like to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So we're building still for the future. Keep going, you know, build more and more, right? So uh, that's what this expansion is. This whole building was just for that. So yeah, that's the goal. You're going to be shipping us pallets of superchargers because we got to take care of all of our customers in Florida and the East Coast and really all over the country. That's right. Exactly. And yeah, we're looking forward to that. Aha. Uh -huh. ones, right? Aha. Uh -huh. so. A little bit of VMP DNA right there. Okay, so I've only seen the, the 3D model that our engineer did and the pictures you sent me. Yep, yep. So, pretty cool. It looks like it did on the computer. Yeah. <laughs> it does look good. Wow. Came out really good, right? Yeah. So I had wondered about that. You'd gone to a common casting, okay, so yeah. you've got the recess for the cylinder head. Yep. Oh, and I saw where you've got injector clocking. Yeah, so we have uh, the GT500 injector made specifically to, you know, have that straight pattern with it clocked that way. Okay. Yeah, it came out really good. I mean, Josh, yeah, really, it, really did, he did a good job on it. It looks <laughs> incredible. It really looks amazing. I mean, like the texture, I mean, like, yeah, the powder coat and just everything, it looks very consistent. You've got to walk around the Whipple facility with me and Rebecca and Dustin and Chuck. And really it is an awesome facility. They're doing a lot of really cool things and they share a lot of the same values as us and have gone down a lot of the same paths that we have. So this new partnership is gonna be a great thing. It's gonna allow us to bring even more options to our customers. I'm super excited about it. This is gonna be going on our 24 Mustang and I'm looking forward to working with you guys. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. And there's a lot of other products besides just this that you know will help build your brand and build our database. Yeah, yeah, that was definitely. Excited to be excited to be a part of the <laughs> the, the VMP future and uh, continue your innovation with you guys and continue to push the limits on stuff. Yep. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time.